If we ignore air resistance, then the only force acting on a particle freely moving near the Earth's surface is gravity, which is vertically down. So here we have a particle near the Earth's surface. We can pretend that we have no air, so air resistance is zero. Um, the particle is free to move, so it may have been released from rest. So the force on it is towards the center of the Earth, which means that the force is vertically down towards the surface of the Earth. Now we will deal with situations where the motion of this particle is linear. That means in the vertical direction only. So we will not consider particles that are moving, say, in a direction that has a horizontal component, that has a non-zero horizontal component. We'll, we'll cover that in projectile motion. So we will just deal with the simplest case of particles moving vertically up or down. Now this particle could have been released from rest and if it is gravity will act on it, the force will be vertically down as I said before. But it doesn't have to have been released from rest. It's quite possible that it could be moving upwards with a certain velocity v. Then you might ask what is the force on it? Well we will discuss forces in later videos but um, you know for now I'll just say that it doesn't matter what the speed of the particle is, vertically up or down. The force on it is always constant. It's always vertically down, this force vector. We could call it F. So that is something that's counterintuitive, because normally we associate a speed with a force. So if the particle is moving upwards very quickly, we assume that there's a force acting upwards. But that is not actually the case. Okay, once the particle is freely moving, the only force acting on it will be gravity, which is vertically down. Now, what about the acceleration of the particle? Well, that's where Newton's second law comes in, and again, we will discuss Newton's second law in later videos. But for now, all you need to know is that the acceleration of the particle is in the same direction as the resultant force on the particle. Now, the only force on the particle is gravity. That's F. So F is the resultant force. So the acceleration is in the same direction as F, namely vertically down. Now I've just made the velocity vector red because that's the color that you will see in the simulation. And I'm showing the acceleration vector in blue. Now for all objects, regardless of the mass, if the objects are near the Earth's surface, then the acceleration due to gravity is vertically down and has magnitude 9.81 meters per second squared. So it doesn't actually matter what the mass of this particle is. I could make this particle much more massive. The acceleration has magnitude 9.81. So in particular, that tells us that if we drop two objects of different masses, suppose we drop them. Okay, so let's suppose that this velocity now is zero. Okay, so both of these objects are at rest. Well, both objects, since they're freely moving, um, are acted on by Earth's gravity, so the force is vertically down. Hence, by Newton's second law, the acceleration is vertically down. But the fact is that th the acceleration is actually the same. Okay, so in the absence of air, if we remove all the air, these two objects will hit the ground at the same time because they're released from rest and they have the same acceleration. So if one object, say, is a feather, and the other object is a, say, a heavy object like a hammer, then both feather and hammer will hit the ground at the same time. That's if we can remove all the air. Of course, in the presence of air, the feather will, will um, slowly glide down to the ground. It will take longer to hit the ground than the hammer. Okay, let's see a simulation of linear motion under gravity. That means linear in the vertical direction. So here's our particle at ground level. So t is set to zero. t will be in seconds, but this simulation is in slow motion. Okay, I've given this particle. I'm going to give this particle an initial velocity of 26 meters per second vertically upwards. Okay, so when t is not, v is 26 meters per second. So let's see the simulation. So the particle is launched upwards. Um, there's no air resistance comes to a stop of course and we all know that it falls back down to the ground again. So let's see this again with the velocity vector. Okay so this is the initial situation t is zero. 
Now, the acceleration due to gravity is vertically down. It's minus 9.81, as we can see here. So that's denoted by the letter G. So the velocity of this particle will decrease by 9.81 meters per second each second. So let's see that. So V is decreasing by 9.81 meters per second each second. Particle stops, V is zero. V continues to decrease, so now V is negative and the particle is falling down. So we can, since we're dealing with linear motion with uniform or constant acceleration, okay, G is constant for objects near the surface of the Earth. We can use this formula here to give us the velocity at any time t. So we just plug minus 9.81 in for v. Sorry, minus 9.1 is plugged in for a. We can also calculate the displacement vector at any time t. Uh, we plug minus 9.1 in for a, and half of minus 9.81 is minus 4.9. Okay, so let's see the displacement vector. So S starts at naught. I'll show the acceleration vector if I want. Now, it may seem counterintuitive that if the particle has an initial speed of 26 meters per second vertically up, then the acceleration is always constant. Okay, so you know, to launch the particle, the particle presumably starts from rest, zero, reaches a speed of 26 meters per second. But that happens in a very, very short time interval. As soon as the particle leaves the launching mechanism at ground level, the acceleration is minus 9.81. Okay, so um, that is something that we will discuss in later videos to do with force on an object. So when the particle is being launched, there's a force on it due to the launching mechanism. But as soon as the particle leaves the launching mechanism, that mechanism is no longer exerting a force on the particle. So the only force acting on the particle as soon as it's launched is gravity. Hence, the acceleration of the particle immediately after it's launched is the acceleration due to gravity, minus 9.81. So it doesn't matter how great the velocity is, um, you know, as soon as the particle is launched, the acceleration is constant, minus 9.81. Now suppose that we want the maximum height reached by the particle. Well, we could find a time taken for the particle to stop. Well, that's one way to do it. Well, that's one question that we could ask. How long does it take for the particle to stop after it's launched? So let's launch this again. So at what time is V equal to zero? Let's try and stop it when V is zero. It's about here. So here I've set V equal to zero. Now we can find the time by using our formula, of course. We just set V equal to zero and solve for the time. So we have U. We have the acceleration due to gravity, minus 9.81, and we have to solve for this number, and you can see that it's t equals 2.65. We could then plug that time into the second formula, if we like, to get the displacement vector s. So I'll show the displacement vector. So this is the maximum height reached by the particle. 